Hey there, New Life. Excited to get into God's Word with you today. You know, this last Sunday, Pastor Greg Wingard opened up a conversation about giving. And I hope that you listened, not just with your ears, but also with your heart. Because I believe that this is something that he opened up as a way that this isn't something that God wants from us. He doesn't want our money. No, he wants our heart. God wants something for us. And as we get into this holiday season, and especially Thanksgiving and Christmas, I, I want to ask you a really important question. That is, have you already set up your Christmas decorations? That's a, a super important conversation to have because I believe that the level of our Thanksgiving and our Christmas celebration has to do with when we set up Christmas. Do you just gloss over the Thanksgiving holiday looking forward to December 25th, or do you revel in the attitude of thankfulness. Now, of course, I'm being a little sarcastic and a little funny, but I do think that we should wait until afterwards to set up Christmas, but that's not my wife. I'll probably set up Christmas this weekend. But I think that there is a part that we really do need to slow down and, and wait for the part of Christmas that's about uh, getting and receiving and all of that and to just be present in, a, in an attitude of thankfulness and an attitude of gratitude and especially when it comes to giving. Like I said, Pastor Greg Wingard opened up a conversation about giving and tithing. And I think that's related to this concept. And I'm going to open up a passage of scripture found in Luke chapter 7, verse 47. Uh, and it's a story of a woman named Mary, not the Mary, the mother of Jesus, but uh, an immoral woman who was found in sin, known to be a sinful woman. And she has this amazing display of thankfulness this amazing display of gratitude, this amazing display of love for Jesus. Uh, Jesus comes into this Pharisee's house and they're having a, a meal and a conversation and this woman comes in and opens up this uh, expensive perfume, pours it all over Jesus' feet, uses her own tears and her hair to wipe up his feet. Now to us in 21st century in America, that sounds really, really weird, but I also think that in the ancient times with Jesus, that was probably one of the greatest displays of love and affection and care and gratitude that you could possibly come up with. And Jesus doesn't just see the woman's action. He sees her heart. He sees her motive. And he even sees the Pharisees' thoughts going into this circumstance. But listen to how Jesus responds in this verse, verse 47. He says, I tell you her sins, they are many. This woman had some issues. This woman, it's not only a thing to, to know that you're a sinful person, but when the Bible says you have a lot of sins, you have a lot of sins. But then he says, they are many have been forgiven. So she has shown much love, but a person who is forgiven only a little shows a little love. So I want to open up this idea today and pull out this observation that our thankfulness shows up in our giving the level of gratitude that we have towards the things of God, the level of gratitude we have towards the people in our life shows the level, uh, shows up in how we give thanks. You know, I think that if you are a person who is thankful, that you will be a giving person, hence the name Thanksgiving. I also thought this to be true, that our thankfulness shows up in our sacrifice. This woman not only um, let out a jar of perfume on Jesus' feet. It was a very expensive jar of perfume, and the disciples actually knew how much this jar of perfume was, and they thought it was too expensive. But Jesus says, this woman knows that she's been forgiven a lot, so she's grateful for a lot. I want you to know that one of the biggest enemies of thankfulness is expectation, that when you expect to receive, when you expect something in return, when you expect and, and anticipate and assume it kind of wears down our ability to be thankful. And some of us have heard the message of Jesus so much and for so long that, you know, it's been something that we just assume that we, we know we take it for granted. But I want you to look at the story of Jesus, the mercy and the grace of Jesus today with fresh eyes and with a fresh perspective. That you have been forgiven of much. That I have been forgiven of much. And so that should show up not only in our words, but in our giving. It should show up not only in our giving, but in our sacrifice. And so let's pull out some applications for us today. The first one being, as a Christian, we should wait until after Thanksgiving to set up for Christmas. I'm joking. But no, we should evaluate how you are showing your thankfulness. How am I living a life of thankfulness in this holiday season? How am I slowing down 
and not just receiving, but how am I also giving to others because of the thankfulness that I have? How am I giving to others because of what I have been given? How am I being a blessing to the people around me because God has blessed my life? But then also, how am I sacrificing from a place of thankfulness? God, thank you so much for this, this, and that. And so because of that, God, I'm going to sacrifice this for you. God, I'm going to give this up for you because of what you've done for me. And God, I'm going to live in this season and for the rest of my life, thankfully. Let me pray for you. God, you're awesome and you're amazing. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, I am overwhelmed with the things that I should be thankful for in my own life. So God, let that not just be something I say, let it be something I do, let it be something I live, let it be something I give, and let it be something that I sacrifice. And God, let that be true for every person watching and listening to this right now. Let us to live thankfully. In your name we pray, amen. Have a great rest of your week.